So with computers, we're going to do a simple analogy, something that everybody, no matter where you're coming from, should be able to follow along with if you've, you know, used computers a little bit before. So first off, there's a processor. Now, a processor is hopefully something you've heard of. It's the main part of the computer. It's the one that really does all the work. And my hands are going to represent the processor because the processor is the mover and the doer of the computer. For the most part, anything that's moved and the actions that are taken are all done by the processor. We'll cover a little bit more about that as we go. So these blocks are going to represent bits. And when I mean bits, I just mean bits of information. So as I'm processing this information as the processor, I'm going to grab and move manipulate blocks. But the thing is, is I can only hold on to so many blocks at one time. So the more I add, the more difficult it gets to move things around. So it'd be great as the processor if I had a place to lay everything down. That is RAM or memory. I'm going to lay everything down in the RAM. So as I lay everything down, I can organize it, set it out, and now I have a whole lot of space to work with. I can grab information out of the RAM as the processor, manipulate it, and then put it back in the RAM in a new order. So this is great. This is all done with electricity. And the RAM is remembering my changes. So I'm changing the data, and I put it back in the RAM, and the RAM remembers the changes. What happens if I turn off the computer at this point? Everything is gone because it's electricity. And so even though RAM will remember what I'm doing while the computer is on, if I turn the computer off, RAM no longer remembers what I'm doing. So with this kind of a setup, a computer can think about information, rearrange it, and display it. With this, you actually have enough you can run operating systems and programs. So think about it just as a program right now. You have something, you work on it, and you build a program, you have it organized in such a way that it's actually helpful to you. And you think, man, it'd be great if I turn this computer off, if I could pull this information back out the way I left it, and put it back into the RAM so the processor can then start using the program. So, if I'm going to do that, I need something that persists past the reboot, or persistent memory. So that is a hard drive. So hard drives can be anything from like actual hard drives to USB stick. Anything that saves a large amount of data from reboot to reboot can be considered a hard drive. So a hard drive, in our analogy here, is like a drawer. It's where, when we're done working, or in between working on different tasks, we can always store things in a drawer underneath the desk. So as I'm working, I can actually keep my table space clean now, pull things out of the drawer when I need it, manipulate the information, add to the information, and then if I save the information, what I'm doing is copying it back to the hard drive, putting it back in the drawer the way I changed it. If I don't save the information, then the hard drive never sees the change. Something has to be rewritten to the hard drive in a different way to tell the hard drive to get it in storage in the new arrangement. So that's what computers are doing. When you boot it up, you're pulling out all the information it needs to run its operating system and programs into the RAM. A lot of things are too big and too messy, especially Windows itself, to put all on the table at the same time. So the processor takes out a lot of the most important pieces of information so that it can work with and manipulate it. And it starts working on it, and then as it needs more, or as it saves changes, it then accesses the drive to put things up and to pull things back out. If you have an issue and someone says, why don't you try rebooting your computer? What that's doing is it's taking all the bits in the RAM and throwing it away. And that's okay because you can always grab more bits out of the hard drive the next time you reboot. And if there is any errors on your table space, then those errors are gone and you're starting on a clean slate. That's why rebooting can actually help solve a lot of issues. So we've now rebooted and we pulled everything out of the hard drive onto the RAM again, onto the table, onto the memory. 
so the processor can work. And now we have a new problem. With things like video editing, graphics take a lot of power, a lot of need. Really, if you're doing anything besides putting words on a screen, anytime you're showing images and pictures, much like Windows does just by turning itself on, you need help performing those graphics because a CPU, your hands, are something that actually can manipulate data, and it can manipulate any kind of data, but it's a generalist. It's not very good at the specifics. Now, if we invite a friend over, this friend can then start helping us out. So your graphics card is something that can actually help out your CPU because it specializes in graphics and encryption, but we're not gonna talk about encryption right now. So for graphics, what a CPU can do is say, ah, oh, see these little messy bits of graphics? I'm going to hand these messy bits to you. And then you can deal with the messy bits for me. So now the GPU who specializes in this can rearrange and display the messy bits the way they're supposed to be displayed. And it can do the displaying for the processor. So that saves the processor tons of time. Now, one thing it can also do is hand back bits of information that the processor needs when it's done messing with it. Now you'll notice your GPU is kind of like a mini computer inside of your computer. It even comes with its own table space a lot of times because it has its own table space and its own processing units. It can do a lot of extra work really helping out the CPU. So high-end workstations, most of the time editors, have large GPUs inside of them. Sometimes you can have a CPU that has a GPU inside of it. For Intel branded products, that is an integrated graphics chip. For AMD branded products, that is an APU or an advanced processing unit. But the reality is, is what that means is that you both have a CPU and a GPU working at the same time but instead of it being its own card with its own table space, the CPU and the GPU have to share table space, have to share RAM, and it's just not as efficient of a setup. So it is super helpful if you have an APU or integrated graphics instead of no card, extremely helpful, but the most helpful, the best bang for your buck is when you have a higher end graphics card inside of your computer that has its own table space to work in. So that's the basics of how a computer works. And what that means for your NLE is your NLE is a program. Now it's usually a pretty small program. So to get your NLE out, unless you're like Adobe, getting your small program out isn't too hard. So once you get your program out, you can then use it to edit and manipulate video with your CPU. Your NLE naturally uses a processor to look at this information. And if you remember, processors aren't the best at having graphical data be manipulated. But when you're changing and reordering things in a timeline, that's why you notice some severe bogging because suddenly you're using your CPU to add these changes to your timeline. So the better thing to do is to actually ask your graphics card to help. Now, a lot of NLEs are adding more and more of this, including my favorite, Vegas Pro, but what it can do is now, while you're editing, it can actually use, it can say, I wanna do this. And so then it can tell the graphics card to do that and then hand it back to the CPU to keep editing with. More and more NLEs are doing this, and they're doing it more and more and more and more. So that means that a graphics card is becoming more important to your computer. But as an editor, you need to understand your CPU is the most important, and video files are big. So not only do you need big, big hard drives to pull things out of, but you also need a lot of table space to work in, which is why RAM is also very important but then you're going to see a huge increase in power depending on how well your NLE uses your graphics card. 
you're not gonna see your graphics card maxing out constantly because it's only going to be able to do, you might need to consider how well that NLE is designed to use your graphics card and your particular brand of graphics card because brands have different drivers. So let's talk a little bit more about operating systems.